thank you. I have to credit several people in this room for saving my life. And we just got to meet today. Um, we've been corresponding online um, for a while. And it was after I read Jimmy Moore's book and thought that there was some device out there that could help me monitor my levels of ketosis that I started searching the internet and found ketonics and couldn't wait to order one. So in 2013, I was diagnosed uh, with this lovely beast um, that I had no idea was growing in my head for probably the last 20 years. And I was 48 years old. Um, I'm a world champion extreme skier. I jump off cliffs for a living. You don't have these things growing in your head. And I was a, what I thought a healthy person. I'm a farmer. I grow and raise all my own food. And so I thought, you know, what's going on? Why am I acting all weird? My husband thought I was trying to get rid of him. I had really big personality changes. And after I was cooking bacon, ironically, and almost burned the house down, I was just sitting there watching it in flames. My husband took me to the emergency room and said, you know, something's wrong with this woman. She's watching the house burn down and she doesn't even care. So this is what they found. And you know, basically, it was about to kill me. You can see how large the tumor was. It was pressing on the only two arteries of blood that feed into the brain. And so I was literally days away from dying. And I had been going to a doctor, and they did all my blood work, and they pronounced me perfectly healthy. So this is what happened next, uh, which I barely remember, which is a lovely thing that I barely remember it, because brain surgery can kill you. And they were able to remove the primary tumor, which was about the size of a baseball, uh, larger than a baseball, probably on its way to being a grapefruit. And it was a very malignant, very aggressive tumor that likes to metastasize throughout the entire body. So the surgery was so invasive that they sent me home to recover. And this is a blessing that I had such a difficult brain surgery because one, I came through it okay. A lot of people lose function, you know, you're never going to ski, let alone walk, let alone talk, you know, you can come out with a lot of crazy deficiencies. I was perfectly fine. And I got on the internet. And I realized that the doctor, one, they hadn't told me that I had cancer. They hadn't, they just said I had a tumor, it was no big deal, don't worry about it. Then I look it up and I'm going to die. And then I look up and say, they want me to do chemo and radiation. On Wikipedia, it says I'm going to die faster if I do chemo and radiation. I was like, that's not so great. I kind of knew I didn't want to poison my body because I'm an organic farmer. But I kind of didn't want to die faster and have a crappy quality of life. So I found my doctor in Durango, Dr. Nesha Winters. And She's a functional medicine doctor who had cancer herself and has used the ketogenic diet along with a lot of different, um, I call them futuristic treatments. I don't call them alternative. I don't think this is alternative. I think we're on the cutting edge of something amazing here. Because if someone like me can use the ketogenic diet to battle terminal brain cancer, what health benefits does it have for everybody else in this room and everybody else on this planet? So this is a lot of little numbers. And I know there's a lot of physicians in the room and numbers geeks. I am happy to share this with anybody. I have basically been tracking my blood work since surgery. The interesting thing was is I went on the, anybody heard of that crazy sexy cancer diet? So it's basically a vegan diet. I went on that. I have blood work from when I was vegan, vegetarian, paleo, and ketogenic. <laughs> Pretty cool. Because what you can actually see, uh, my surgery date is on the far uh, right side, looker's right. And my most recent blood work from a few days ago is right next to the orange stripe. This. Uh, 
stripe here is what Western medicine considers healthy parameters, which we all know is bullshit. <laughs> and then this red stripe is what my Dr. Nisha Winters says is her healthy categories. And so we weren't just interested in, in ketones. Um, but when I found this little gadget, it was amazing because what I found was, as I was using uh, the blood test, everybody knows as Precision Ultra, the P strips, which only work for most people for like a few weeks, right? Because as soon as your body ad keto adapts, the P strips no longer work. The blood test strips are so expensive, you know, they're at five bucks a pop. And so I would test once a week in the morning and once a week in the afternoon to see if I was generating ketones. And I was, but they weren't that impressive. So something was awry. So I quickly, when I found this, I ordered it online. And I blow into this thing like it's my crack addict. You know, I eat something, I swish my mouth out with water, I blow into it. And I see how that food works. And because what we found with blood work and what my doctors found, everybody's different. Everybody's metabolism is different, right? So a lot of ketone books talk, cookbooks talk about using coconut. I found I put coconut in my coffee, like a coconut uh, puree that I made myself. I blew into this meter and I was out of ketosis. Wow. I was totally surprised. Now another person can eat coconut and have a completely different reaction, which is why this is so wonderful because you can adapt it to you, to your level of your blood, your body, your metabolism, your level of insulin resistance. Every single person's gonna be different. Another example is I'm a farmer, so I like to grow exotic vegetables. And so of course when I became ketogenic, I started growing a lot of pumpkins and a lot of low sugar winter squashes, um, tomatoes, you know, all the things. I knew they had sugar in them, but because I grew all those vegetables and they're so exotic, you can't go on nutritiondata.self.com and find out what the level of the purple hillbilly tomato is or, oh, sorry, I'm running out of time. Anyway, so I was able to find out whether the foods that I was in ingesting actually were keeping me in ketosis or pushing me out. The great thing about brain cancer and people using ketogenic ther therapies uh, as um, a, you want to achieve a higher level of ketosis than maybe someone who is losing weight. Or you know, if you have MS, you might want to be higher. So having this, I was in the 40s. Um, those of you who have this will know that that's like moderately ketogenic. Um, my blood levels were at like 1.0. Um, then all of a sudden I had this tool and I was able to go up to high 60s, early 70s constantly. And my level of ketosis was then up from two to seven. So I am able to therapeutically use that to, when you have brain cancer, you wanna be really ketogenic. So I'm out of time, I think. Are we allowed to take questions or no. not? Later. So I just wanna say in, on the schedule, my name is listed, Allison Gannett. If you put a .com on there, that's my website. So if you have questions for me, since we can't do Q&A, people can do that. Contact me. And I'm starting cooking camps um, at my farm. So hopefully you can come join me because I think a lot of people, it's hard to figure out how to eat the equivalent of a cup and a half of butter and nine cups of vegetables a day.